Brother Keith, would you like to come and commit us to the Lord this afternoon? Let's just bow our heads. You welcome the Lord here in your own heart this afternoon. Thanks, Brother Keith. Yes, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for blessing us here. You knew who would be here and who wouldn't, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us here, that you have blessed people to listen in throughout the world on your glorious word of love and truth. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for what you have prepared for us this afternoon through Pastor Howard, that we open and receptive and yielding to your word, to what Holy Spirit would have of us, Almighty God. And I thank you for your divine provision, both in Christ Jesus and in Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, your blessings and the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, leading us all the way into salvation. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sing number 159. He is my everything. He is my all. He is my everything. He is my all. Both great and small, he gave himself for me, made everything new. He is my everything. Now, how about you, sweet honey in the rock? Sweet honey in the rock. For he tastes like honey in the rock. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. For he tastes like honey in the rock. He is my. My beloved is mine. My beloved is mine, and I am his, and his banner of me is love. My beloved is mine, and I am his, and his banner of me is love. My beloved is mine, and I am his, and his banner of me is love. His banner over me is loud. He brought me to his banqueting table and his banner over me is loud. His banqueting to his banqueting table and his banner over me is loud. He brought I'm safe and secure in the rock of all ages and 
you happy that it's love that's over you this this afternoon? Praise the Lord. We'll just have, um, yeah, we'll have Sister Diane and Sister Pauline bring the item at this time. And then we'll have testimonies as well, so keep that in mind. after the Lord, of the Lord's goodness. Thank you, Brother Paul. Just the Paul. I just thank the Lord. I, I praise him. We serve a living God. On Monday morning, I woke up and oh, I didn't feel like my head was my own. I was as dizzy as anything and I nearly fell over when I got out of bed and then Tuesday wasn't much better, but... I went to the prayer meeting on Tuesday night and I said, Brother Howard, you prayed that lay hands on the sick and they shall, re you, you preach, pray hands on the sick and they shall recover, and call for the elders of the church. So I said, I'd like prayer, please, and told him what was happening. And just at the end of the meeting, the brothers came up, laid hands on me, anointed me with oil and prayed for me. And I woke up Tuesday morning, I'm healed. 
so healed that on Thursday I even drove the school bus and I, could, I was asking Paul to drive me on Tuesday. I wouldn't go to appointments or anything. I felt so dizzy and disconnected basically. But praise God, he's healed me. He is my saviour. He is my healer and I love him with all of my heart. Isn't it wonderful? You can just meet him at his word and he'll meet you there and, and, and undertake for you. Is there any others? No? Oh, well, we'll sing, we'll sing a few more and then um, we'll ask Brother Hill to come. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. going to sing uh, number 13, Jesus Breaks Every Fetter. If you believe it, sing it. Jesus Breaks Every
Praise the Lord. He's done that for you. And he does. He breaks every fetter. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's many times we just forget it up here. And then it's not until you look back and know that he's broken everything, isn't he? He's brought you along the road. Thank you, Brother Howard. If you wouldn't. Maybe seated. Praise the Lord. He breaks every fetter. Can we stand for the reading of God's word from Luke 10, verse 1? After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place wherewith he himself would come. Therefore he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the labourers are few. Pray therefore that the Lord of the harvest to the Lord uh, pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labourers into his harvest. Go your ways, behold I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Praise the Lord. We just pray God will bless his precious word and shall we just pray. Lord Jesus, we just pray you'll speak to us through the word. For a few moments, Lord, we really love you, Lord. We really do. How we appreciate you, Lord, for all you've done for us. And Jesus does break every fetter. We have confidence in you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to turn to Luke chapter 14, verse 16. Which says, Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. He sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuses. You know what, says, brother, sister? People are always making excuses. Why we can't come to church? Why we can't come to an extra service? It's a big problem. And this is what Jesus is saying. The, and first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs, needs, go and see it. Pray have me excused. Why did he have to go and see it? Because it might run away. Is that right, Brother Andrew? His yeah. property may run away. So he had to go and see it. Yeah. I can't come to the supper. Oh boy. You know why Jesus used these? Because of pathetic excuses. Yes. Why? Another said, I have bought five oak, yoke of oxen, bought, paid for. And I go to prove them. Why do you want to prove it for? You've already bought it. I pray thee, have me excused. Another excuse. Another said, I've married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. What's wrong with bringing her to the supper? Amen. You see why Jesus used these, Paul? These are excuses. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. When the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, Go out quickly into the streets. And lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. There's always room at the supper table of our Lord. And the Lord said unto the servants, Go out into the highways, hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Amen. May God just bless the reading of his precious word. Amen. The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. 
that my house may be filled. I just want to say this. I'm speaking about the final outreach. There's not too many coming. There's not too many coming, Andrew. You found that out on your trip. Brothers always talking to people. But so a few are just inquirers. Oh, yeah. Oh, fair enough for you, but what about you? I'm not too sure. I really believe we've lost our focus a little in regard to outreach. That's reaching out to others, not to the church. People out there, out in the paddock out there. This is rather a big subject covering many aspects. And one thing is for sure. We've all been commissioned to outreach. You say, I'm not a preacher. I didn't say you had to be a preacher. It said you need to outreach. Reach out. We also need to look at the final call outreach in light of the scriptures of what Brother Branham said about it. The Great Commission... He says, we must understand it is a commission by God himself. You all have been commissioned to reach out. Not what our church does or the missionary department. <laughs> all disciples. We are all disciples to go out and tell. You say, hey, don't go. what's wrong with them? What's wrong with the postman at the gate? Is there something wrong with him? When did you last speak to him or even hint that God's coming soon? In Luke 10, he sent them out two by two to every city and place. And this was very extensive evangelistic outreach for our Lord. He sent them ahead. In Mark 16, 15, we read, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized, that's what we're talking about baptism. If you're never being baptized, you should be, shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they just may recover. They shall recover. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It is, you're right. They shall recover. Amen. That's what he said. Now, who believes the Lord? Amen. In Matthew 8, 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's his name. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the, unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. In Mark 13, 10. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. Acts 1, 8. That you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's what you need. Why are we talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost? You're going to need it. Hallelujah. And ye, then it says, After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Gisborne, and in all Judea, and to Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Yes. It's clear we are to outreach to Jerusalem, Samaria, and all the earth, Gisborne, New Zealand, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Why I say that? Does anyone know? Yes. We, are the we are the uttermost part of Jerusalem. Get your map measured out. Isn't it amazing? So we've got a special mention to the uttermost parts of the earth. That's New Zealand. Gisborne, New Zealand. It is full, it's a full global coverage to reach and testify to his offer saving grace. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So what is outreach? I'll tell you what outreach is. Extending ourselves beyond our current or usual limits. That's the exact translation of outreach. I'll read it again. Extending yourselves 
beyond our current or usual limits. Some outreaches talk to your husband or your wife or your children, but didn't say that. Outreach is reaching past your limits, your normal limits. Spiritually, some limits of people is to come to church. That's their limit. They get to church and they've done it. Or wait for people to come to our church. Not in Bible days. They didn't wait for them to come in. In the book of Acts, and even the Gospels, they were always going out. Jesus asked us to extend beyond our current or usual limits. The outreach. Get out and tell. Speak to the neighbour. Yes. So what do I say? Just say, have you ever considered things eternal? What? Have you ever considered things that are eternal? That when we die, we've got to face our maker. Have you ever thought of those things? I don't know yet. No, I can't say I have. And then if whatever answer comes back, you can extend it if the Lord opens the way. Yes, it's always going to cost you something to do it. In Luke 9.23, we read the following. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after him, let him deny himself. Deny yourself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. So there's a cross involved for outreach. Yes. Some say, oh, I've been not saying anything. Why not? Could cost a soul. Yes. Eternal destination. It's really important you say something. For whoso will save his life shall lose it. But whoso will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. What is a man advantage if he should gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come into his own glory and his Father's and of the holy angels. What a terrible thing to get before God. And it should, could be soon for all of us. I say, why didn't you say something? That person down there, remember, see them? You never spoke to them. You thought, oh, no, they, they won't understand. Brother and sister, it could change their life, the eternal destination of that person. Which brings us to another point. Are we ashamed to outreach? No way. I know you do, brother. He's on outreach mission every day. Any opportunity comes up, he tells them about the Lord in some way. I love what Paul said, Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We're not ashamed of the gospel. We should be telling people about the gospel that saved their soul. The gospel of Christ. What is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Your personal outreach could be the eternal lifesaver of some precious soul. How many testimonies have we heard? And people said, somebody spoke to me. That's all they just said, one thing. And it directed them to find God, changed their whole life. Some are so comfortable in church. Their outreach is in church. They don't mind raising their hands in church. They don't mind praying in church. But to get them outside, it's a big problem, even in a restaurant having coffee. Yes. Too afraid to pray. You'll have to answer that one day. Because you'll be recorded, be played back on when you get over there. Why did you, why were you ashamed of me? Yes, we're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. So may God help us all. We just don't want to be comfortable in church. We've got to go out beyond our limits. Be extended beyond our normal limits. Luke ten three says, Go your ways. Jesus said, Behold, I send you as lambs among wolves. Don't expect them to come and pat you on the back and say, man, that's great what you're saying. 
They'll hate you for it. But those that are ordained to hear will hear the words of life. We do not have to fear. Jesus promised to help us during outreach, reaching out beyond our limits. We all need to be, we all need, all we need is a burden for souls. And God will take care of the rest. We need a burden for souls. In Luke 12, 11, we read this. And when they bring you into the synagogues and into the magistrates, unto the magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost, that's why you need it. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. God will speak through you. You don't have to think, now. Oh, what shall I say? Oh, I've got a book here. What's the book say? Uh, you haven't got time. It'll just come forth out of your heart. Praise be to God. Who loves the Lord? So may God help us. He'll teach us what to say. In Acts 4.12 it says, Neither is there salvation in any other. No other. For there is none other, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What name are we saved by? Jesus Christ. That's good. Amen. Doing well. What name are we saved by? Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, I love to speak the truth. Amen. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Yes, and brother and sister, if you've been with Jesus, you get that Holy Ghost that's being with Jesus, people notice the boldness. When you speak, Brother Peter, yeah. it'll be a, a boldness that comes from the inside, like Peter. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> how do we outreach is the next question. Everyone has a different calling. You say, well, I can't, I don't, I just can't speak at all. Can you sing? <laughs> sing, whistle down the street. Yeah. Heard some good whistling this afternoon. Was that you, Brother Keith, whistling there? That sounded good, Brother. Why not? Why not whistle? Pauline, you're always singing. If you can't speak, sing. You'll be amazed the testimony that holds. Don't try to imitate somebody else. Be yourself. Outreach with what God has given you. Some can sing, some can preach. But all can testify. And who testi what are you testifying? Of what God has done for you. Hallelujah. I know that God changed my life. If you've got that testimony, tell others. Creates faith. Creates a hunger in their heart. When they hear from you that my life has been changed when I heard the word of God. You must have a testimony before you can pre outreach. Brother Randall made this statement. I say this. As soon as God lights the candle take off. <laughs> when he lights the candle, the fire of God lights you, take off, he says. If you don't know no more, just tell them how the candle got lit. What, how did you get lit? I'm, I was just praying and God came to me and I'm alive. Hallelujah. I'm alive because he lit me. Praise the Lord. That's what we need anyhow. Instead of so much theology, Candle lighting. Just tell how it got lit. That's all you have to do. Tell. Don't try to preach it. Just say how it got lit. Be yourself and God will bless you. I got filled with something that's burning me up. It's burning me up. That's all. And you can have it too. Outreach with your own personal experience with God. If God has given you life, you're responsible to share it. We've all got to share our experience. There's no escape. Remember, the ones that were given the talents, God came back for them. He gave them talents, one talent, two talents, and five talents. 
They all had to make use of that. And one buried his talent. He buried it. He hid it and did not tell people about what God had done for him. The Lord was not happy with him. Outreaching with the message. I feel some have lost what the true outreach really is. Remember the primary objective in outreach is to preach the word. And for God to confirm the word with signs following. Do you believe God can see signs following your ministry? He promised it's not you. You can't do it, but he will. And for God to confirm the word with signs following, people need to be liberated, setting the captives free. You may be the only lifeline, Pauline. Ah, Mari, ah, John. Oh boy, I've got a problem. Diane, you may be the only person that somebody's depending upon. What a responsibility. And the same with me, same with all all of us. The people need to be liberated, setting the captives free. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, for our gospel came not unto you in word only. Not just preach, preach, preach. Oh, I know the answers. No. But also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. As you know what men of men, we were among you for your sake. It's got to be always accompanied with power. That's why I tell people, you've got to touch God. You know, people come and say, oh, I need the Lord. Would you pray for me? No, you pray yourself. It's you communicating with God for God to come to you. I believe when we outreach, it's more than giving out books and tracts. They have their place. But it's more than that. You've got to be a witness and a testimony that God is alive. It's more than ordaining ministers, setting up churches, installing printing presses. They all have a place. But it's more than that. They have their part to play. Brother, we have slipped back into denominationalism, even in this message. I'm sorry to say, but yes. Let's read this. Tell me, Brother Branham said here. See what's going to happen. He's swiftly sending these Holy Ghost messengers out into all parts of the world now. For the time is at hand. We're here. We're there. Not to pass out tracks, which tracks is ever so good, but to bring the message of divine deliverance to those captives who are sitting in darkness. If somebody's dying, for ca- dying of cancer, and they're just there dying, you don't hand them a tract. They can't even concentrate to read it. You say, I've got, I've got something in my heart that's real. It's a Holy Ghost and I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm going to pray that God's going to set you free. Do you believe that? Amen. Brother, we're not wishbones. We're not a church organisation. We're the church of the living God. There'll be no rapture for any one of us until the last one comes in. You may be chosen of God to bring in that last predestinated seed. Well, what a thing that would be. We must not limit the outreach to message churches. It's one thing I've never done. I go to any church. If the Pope asked me to come and preach in his church, I'd come and preach it. I would. Because I preach the souls that need Christ. Would you? Oh, no, I've got to belong to our group. I oh, forget it. Which group is stable anyway? Preach the word. Because it's popular and easy going to preach to those who agree with you. Everyone says, Amen! Amen! Praise the Lord! You get amongst a group that disagree with you, they've got faces like sour as cucumber, no, lemons. You just got to preach it. I'm always challenged and blessed to preach in other churches who have never heard this gospel. Every human being is a potential bride member for Christ. 
you've got to always think of that. We must have that attitude before we go out. This attitude, we are the bride, we are in, and they are out, is from hell. That's where it comes from. To say that we are the bride, we are in, and they are out, is from hell. Jesus never did that. He preached everywhere. He went to the temple. They disagreed with him. He still preached. He preached to the sinners. He got accused for it by the, the Pharisees. He preaches, he sits with sinners. He said, but they need a saviour. Yes. We've got to go out and preach this gospel for outreach. God has his children everywhere. In places we least expect. They might be at your job. Where are you working? The people you're brushing shoulders with. <coughs> Look at Saul who became Paul. My yes. this, they said, this was the Antichrist to come. That's what they said about Paul. He's, he, obviously, he's not of God. The greatest man the church has ever seen Hallelujah. outside of Christ. The New Testament ministry. Look at all the immoral people that Jesus went out his way to speak to. Every person is savable. Who believes that? Absolutely. The devil says, oh no, they're not rubbish, Satan. Mind your own business. The Bible says he died for the sins of the whole world. Yes. So he preached the gospel to them that be saved. Hallelujah. Now he says here, the greatest bell ever fought. Now I cannot keep away from the, the church out there. Brother Ram says, I can't keep away from those churches out there. That's right. Somebody says, well... Why don't you go out with them people? Why do you go out with them people, those Trinitarians and all this and that and the other? The oneness in Jesus' name and all these other things out there. Why do you mix up with them at all? He said, they are mine. They are mine. No matter what they have done, they are mine. They are my pulpit. This world should be our pulpit. Don't select who, the, who you want to preach to in that. Just tell every soul. I love that. He sends a light, not to shine where there is light, but where there is darkness. That's where light belongs. You've got to get with the people. You've got to stand with them regardless. Who believes that? Absolutely. No matter how long they are, let's not disfellowship or disassociate ourselves with anything. As long as we can win a soul, let's go in with wise as serpent and harmless as doves and try to win every soul that we can. So we need to be as wise as serpents. Don't go and you wouldn't go into a Catholic church and preach about the Antichrist. <laughs> You wouldn't want to do that, Brother Tom. I'd have you out, out on the foyer pretty quickly. So you've got to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Those lacking the spirit and calling go crashing in. God sent a prophet. There may be a time for that, but most times there's not. Just preach the word. When the doors slam shut, in their face, they, they justify their actions by saying, oh, they're just, they're not of God, they're serpent seed or something like that. Oh, it's just so foolish. We don't want to do that. We're preaching God sent his word. Brother Branham, Brother Paul, Brother Peter preached the full gospel. And so do we. Amen. We must preach the full gospel. We should also preach the gospel the blood of Christ and the Holy Ghost. People to, to, to today don't even know how to get saved. I can guarantee you this. You go out to a thousand people in, in Gisborne and ask them, do you know how to get saved? They wouldn't be able to answer you. Very few would. So tell them, Jesus died for your sins at Calvary. And all you have to do is accept what he's done for you. 
and you'll have eternal life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. That's all you have to do. It's not complicated. Or you've got to believe this, or you've got to believe that. Let's just preach the gospel. That's the outreach message. Just preach from the Bible. So what do you quote? Just quote the Bible. Hallelujah. The final outreach. Where did Jesus direct the gospel to? To the bride churches? The rich and intellectual? <laughs> what was the final call? Let's read Luke 14, 20. And another said, I have married a wife. Had their own church, see. And therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. And when the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes and in the city and bring in hither the poor and the lame and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is all done. And thou has, as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. The seats are still empty. You know why? Because we haven't got out and spoke to people. Yes. That we're responsible. God is holding us responsible and all his children responsible to go tell. Go into highways and hedges and ask them if they'd like to come. Doesn't say that. Compel them to come in. If I had somebody here, I'd grab by the scruff of the neck like Paul. You must come in, Paul. It's got to be like that that my house may be filled, he said. I believe God is able to raise a generation out there who will receive it. There's not many left, but there are some. Receive what? The pure gospel. As restored to us in this day, back to the original gospel that's preached. It would be absolutely scriptural if a new generation crossed Jordan. In Matthew... 3, verse 8, we read, Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. Or say unto you, For I say unto you that God is able to, these stones to raise children unto Abraham. God can lift up people out of the ground, off the street. Amen. For children of Abraham. That's what he said. I'll read you what the Amplified Bible says. Matthew 3 8. Bring forth fruit that is consistent with repentance. There's got to be repentance. Let your lives prove your change of heart. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham for our forefather. For I tell you, God is able to raise up descendants of for Abraham from these stones. Do you believe God can do that? Amen. Jesus said so. Amen. You think he's limited to our little group? No. He'll have everyone there. Amen. Wonderful Saviour. The parable tells us the same thing in the first group. And they played with it. It will not be great numbers, but one, two, a gleaning after the combine has been through. And God will get every one of his children that's predestinated to be in that kingdom. Yes. So let us go out and preach each person to their calling and compel them. Oh, sorry, Sister Mary. Don't just pass it off. This is what God said. You need to find God. You need to repent and ask him to come into your heart or be lost. Tell them. Right. Compel them. Don't take no for an answer. Challenge them. With the lateness of the hour. Yes. May God grant it to us all. Give us that burden. Give us that boldness. Who wants it? Yes. Shall we stand for prayer? Compel them. The final outreach. We've all been commissioned. We're going to get out and do it. Don't be afraid. Be not afraid. Get out and tell 
Shall we just pray? Lord Jesus, never let this become a light subject. Reveal to us by your Holy Spirit the seriousness of what has been said, Lord. That we all have responsibilities to go tell. So I tried, or try again. Keep trying until one soul comes in. What a wonderful thing that will be. Please help us, Lord. Give us the boldness they had in the early church. They preached the word with signs following. God confirming it. Help us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Sowing in the morning, sowing in the sky, sowing in the night and the journey, waiting for the harvest. For bringing, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep, bringing in the sheep, bringing in the sheep. We shall come rejoicing. day standing there with all the millions standing there and the Lord and all the angels and ten people come up say to see this little lady here Sister Merle, Gilchrist we're here because of her won't that be wonderful what a time that'll be a star on your crown sister or to, Ma, to Diane or to any one of us because you spoke up you said the right thing at the right time with the right heart attitude towards them. Sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadow, bearing neither cloud nor winter's chilling rain. By and by the heart and the labour in me, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. Shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep, bringing in the sheep, bringing in the sheep. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep, going forth with weeping, going for the Precious Lord Jesus, Lord, we Lord, just commit ourselves into your hands, Lord. We, we just know, Lord, that it's by your Spirit, Lord Jesus, that you move, Lord. And what can we do as mere men, Lord? We need your unction, Lord, your anointing, Lord, your help, Lord, even in every day, Lord Jesus, as we walk along the way. We need your sustaining power, Lord, that, that keeps us day by day, Lord. And we know it is you that keeps us, Lord. And we just... Um, Commit each one into your hands as we go away, Lord. We pray a blessing upon them, Lord. May you, uh, Lord, be with each person, Lord, and and, and uh, the needs that are on the hearts of the people, Lord, and the desires as well. We just pray you would be with them as we go away. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you have another song? Yep, let's sing this one. Rescue the perishing. For the dying, snatch them from death. We of the hearing one, lift up the fallen, tell them to hear, mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is mercy.
Bless you. Hope you have a blessed week. We'll be with you.